he's going to the Hall of Fame. I can say these things. I can say these things. I know players don't like hearing that because they like to push back on it, but it's the truth. His name's Bobby Wagner. He's going to the Hall of Fame, and he's back with the Seattle Seahawks, fresh off a big win in Detroit. Good to see you, Bobby Wagner. Great to see you, too. How are you doing? I'm good. Where do I find you in? It's an interesting room that you're in right here. What, what, in what is it? Uh, Seahawks um, media room. They were very excited that this is one of the first conversations oh. we get to have. Wait a minute. Are we breaking in the first com- one of the first conversations in the new media room set up for exactly these things for the Seattle Seahawks, Bobby? Is that what I think so. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. We're planting a fl- I, haven't seen, I haven't seen anybody have this background. Okay. Then, then the, I really? haven't seen it either. That's why I asked, where are you? We're planted. F- so I was the first guy in the history of NFL Network. It's only right that I'm part of the first interview, it's Bobby. Only right. This makes sense. It does. I told, I told him we had to, you know, do it on this show. Thank you, Bobby Wagner. I'm planting a flag right now. I like it. Very good. And it's great to see you back with that Seahawk logo on you. Did you think at this point last year that you'd ever wear this logo again, Bobby? Not at all. I thought we were going to be doing shows, you know, for a long time until uh, I decided to retire. But right. know, here we go. So walk me through, because we haven't spoken uh, since then. How how did the, the bridge get repaired, Bobby, for you? Um. I mean, personally, it was never, uh, I don't think it was ever broke. Mm -hmm. I think it was more professionally. I didn't, um, you know, I think it wasn't handled the right way. But personally, we was always cool. And so, um, you know, when everything kind of went down with the Rams and, you know, there was an opportunity for me to come back, you know, it just made sense. And I'm sure it made sense the minute you started walking around town, right? I mean, people must have been flocking up to you right away to just say, welcome back, welcome home. Right, Bob. Oh, uh, yeah, it definitely, they definitely was very, very welcoming throughout the city. Um, and it was even before that, you know, when I was kind of um, floating around, they were kind of saying, like, so when are you coming back? Um, so uh, I felt the love from the city. Obviously, my teammates um, pushed for me to come back. And so uh, that's a dope feeling. Okay. So when was the last time you paid for a meal in Seattle? Let's be honest. Let's be, let's be straight up here, Bob. I, I still pay for a meal. Cause I think, you know, when people do a service, <laughs> People do a service, they should get paid for it. You Very know good. I, mean? I appreciate that. No, I, I, I do appreciate that. But you've had you've had stuff sent to tables, right? I mean, people send stuff over to you all the time. That must happen for you. I've, I've had, yeah, I've had some stuff or, uh, you know, appetizers. I'll take some appetizers. Okay. Very good. Well, I'm just, it, it is, again, speaking on behalf of all the 12s of uh, who I know and friends to see you back. And then it's just great to see you wearing that number right in the middle of it. What was that first game? I know it didn't work out well against the Rams on the scoreboard, but coming out of the tunnel for the first time, what was that like for you? Bob? Uh, it was amazing. Um, that, I think I, uh, I think we ran out in the preseason and, you know, we didn't have all the fans there yet. And it was nuts. So that first game, um, it was probably one of the loudest cheers I've ever, ever received, ever got um, from, just everybody, even the, you know, my teammates. Um, it was really cool to kind of run out and kind of be back in the flow of things and be back in this experience, um, you know, looming field again. And um, I think I've said this before, but, you know, my my last play before uh, um, I left to the Rams wasn't a pleasant one. And so, uh, you know, to be in a position to, to write that uh, is a blessing. Well, speaking of writing things, the team um, after week one going into week two and doing what you guys did in Detroit, what was that lead up to that game like for you in that building, Bobby? Yeah, I mean, I think there was a lot of disappointment from, you know, how we handled that game. Um, You know, we definitely felt like we didn't play our best ball against the Rams. And so, um, you know, we were going into playing a, a very, very hot team, a team that just beat the defending champions. Um, at their place, and they were coming in for their home opener. And, uh, you know, we just had to make sure everybody was right and understanding what's the task at hand. And, and um, you know, it's a long season. And obviously Gino was there, you know, before you left, and now you return, and Gino is the man as the quarterback of this team. What What is different about him now that you've been around him as the starter, Bobby? Anything at all? Um. Not necessarily, honestly, because um, before I left, uh, I, I used to say it a lot, but, you know, you, you watch him prepare, you would have thought that he was the starting quarterback. 
just the way that he prepared. Um, it's just, you know, on Sundays, uh, it was Russ's job. So I think that was the difference was, you know, I think the preparation was the same, but, you know, he got the opportunity to actually play and show, um, you know, what he was about. And, you know, the stuff was kind of catered towards, you know, the things that he likes, the things that he wants to throw, the things that he wants to do within the offense. So I would say that's probably the difference is the, the um, offense was catered around what, um, you know, he, he wants to do and what's good for the team. And just his command of the, um, the offense, command of the huddle, the way he carries himself throughout the building, um, it's contagious. And uh, Pete is the same, right? He hasn't changed a lick, Bobby, at all? Yeah, or maybe a few more gray hairs, but outside of that, he's, That's it. he's a same person. Well, I saw him, uh, it looked like he was running a West Coast offense during uh, the summer. I saw him uh, out there rolling to his right, find, you know, throwing in the end zone. I saw all those videos, Bobby. What'd you think? Yeah, so they, they, so they put these clips out, right, and mm -hmm. they show all his good plays, but they don't show none of the other plays that happen. Like what? Um, like what? interceptions and you How many? know drop balls and stuff. So after they put that clip out, I think he threw like fourteen interceptions. <laughs> the time he came out did there, you so. get him once, Bobby? Did you get yeah. him? Did you get him For once? Sure. Did you pick him once? For sure. For sure. You know, he was sending blitzes and two like he was running, but we he's not gonna run after uh, you know, Russ Bassett and us. That's what I was about to say. You know, again, it was it was fun to see him rolling out and stuff like that and you know, uh, but you're a prideful man. Even those mirthful videos, you don't want that to be splashed onto the defense, right? At all. Yeah, I mean, I think it was just all funny game. It was, it was funny. Um, you know, he does it. He's been doing it for <laughs> 11, 12 years since I've been here. So it's every Friday he comes out and he, um, you know, he likes to throw the ball around, move around a little bit, and it's, it's fun. So you've been around some teams, uh, obviously, for the Seahawks who have won it all, who have gone deep in the playoffs. What, what do you sense about this one right now? I know it's just two weeks in, but there's a lot of talented kids. And um, and obviously what you guys just did in Detroit uh, shows the depth of what you saw last year from this team uh, inside. The heartbeat still beats pretty darn strong, Bobby. What do you What do you make of that? Yeah, I feel really good. I mean, I think, um, like I said, the first game didn't go the way we wanted to, but um, we definitely had a, a good game against Detroit, and it's trying to find a way to capture that um, energy, capture that style of play every single game. I think that's what we're learning how to do, but I definitely feel like we got the guys that care, um, the guys that want to get that done, and it's a, it's a good group of guys to be a part of. Bobby Wagner here, a few more minutes left with the – future pro football hall of famer here on the rich eisen show how has the game changed since you came out of college bobby what do you got for me on that one um college different i mean when i first got in the league they were, they were um using fullbacks more um i think gradually they uh they stopped using fullbacks now they're you know they started using tight ends as fullbacks but i think it's all a cycle it's, it's always like um, you know, they're, they're running a lot more spread offenses. When I first got in the league, they were doing read zone. Um, you know, I think it was Russ. I think it was um, Luck, RG3. But then you saw those guys kind of getting hit. And you've seen these quarterbacks taking some some pretty good hits on these plays. And so you saw those kind of, you know, fade out. But then they kind of came back. Um, but they don't. They only use them on like third down or, you know, must-have plays. Um, but... You know, I think you don't find ways to get the the ball in your your guys' hands, and so it's um I would say that that's the biggest difference. Just you see more spread now, you see more um you know faster tight ends. I think there was a point in time where they were making they were moving the safeties and having the safeties play linebacker, but um I still think that there's a a need for um for linebackers that can you know handle the run but also be able to handle the pass. Yeah, and it just seems that uh, there's fewer field goals kicked. It seems like everybody's going for it on fourth down, that there's always four down territory, whether it's your own, you know, the uh, the, uh, the opposing 42 or the opposing 48 or, you know, or it just seems like there's there's a lot of teams that stay out there on the field and test you on fourth down. Do you see that a little bit more, Bobby? Yeah, I mean, you have it You have it on some teams, even like the, you know, the Lions. You know, we knew that they were going to go go for it on fourth down um, a lot, but – you know, the the opposite side of that is if you don't get it, um, you know, it puts us in a good field position. And, um, 
you know, I think they find their moments, but, you know, I think it's just a team being aggressive. You know, I think I'm, I'm for, you know, teams being aggressive. I think if, you know, from a fan's perspective, it keeps it interesting. Um, Bobby, you always got something going on. What's going on with you off the field? What's happening with you? What do you, what do you, I, I'm told you have a, um, a comic book. Is that, is that what you I got going on? I do have a comic book. I actually have one right here. I'm going to get one to you. Okay. I'd like to see um, it. Well, hold it up. This, this is the comic book. Fast 54. Fast 54. Yeah. No, basically tells a nice little story. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this, this kind of came together. Um, I always try to find unique ways to, um, um you know, do things and, and, um, stroke is something that's been very, very important to me for a long time. My mom had, um, several before she passed and, um, I just wanted to find a way to, um, provide some help as well as educate people on, you know, what are the signs of stroke. And so, um, uh, I partnered with the Seahawks and, um, Virginia Mason Franciscan health to create this comic book. And we're going to be giving them away. We're going to be doing stuff within the community um, at different schools. Um, a lot of the information is online. Um, I got it. I think the link is on my um, my IG and, and uh, it's on the Seahawks page as well. And so um, we're looking for people to donate. Um, the fund is in my mom's name. It's called the Finia May Fund. And that's going to provide help for um, recovering victims or recovering patients from that have that had stroke. And, um, uh, we're just trying to find a way to help people that I know are suffering from things that I'm close to and educate young individuals to help see the signs of these things and, you know, kind of turn into a big deal. Yeah. VM, uh, dot org slash Seahawks for you to also, Check out a video version that you voiced of the the yep. comic book. You're good people, man. I, I, yep. I, that's so fun. When they, when they click on that link, they'll see they'll have a digital copy of the the um the comic. They'll have a voiceover mm-hmm. copy of the comic, and then they'll have a place where they can donate uh, money, and that money will go to um you know helping people get back on their feet. Okay, is it true that the villains in this wear 49 are red, Bobby? Is that true in this uh, comic uh, book? No. I mean, you know, no. Maybe it's, you know, 49 are red, Rams blue, okay. you know. Cowboys, Cowboys that they have a star on the side or something like that. Is that what? No star on the side, no star on the side. Okay. We might, we might get charged for that. So, no, uh, you don't want to do that. I know yeah, Jerry Jones is he's, he he <laughs> he guards the the star very well. And so, you you're going to see Dallas on a Thursday night, um, yeah. is that, that, back back, I think we're the first team ever to do Thursday and Thursday games. They're going to be doing Thursday and Thursday, and guess what? You're going to see Richard Sherman, uh, part of the paparazzi. How about them apples? Yeah, I know. I got to see him uh, last year. He's uh, doing a good job. Yeah, he's he he is. Is that is that what you want to do when, when you're done, Bobby? What are you thinking? What's your next no, step? No, what do you want to do? No. Whenever I'm done, um, I'm definitely trying to own a team. I'm trying to run some funds and and make some money all right what do you when you say own a team you're talking about being the lead investor being what what are you talking about here Walk um, me through. what's your vision give me your vision give me your blueprint right here honestly my my the perfect vision i think would be to be a president mm-hmm. as well as a part owner whether it's majority or uh, minority um i just want to be a part of that i feel like there's not enough um players not enough representation in that space and i feel like i could be the perfect person to to do that so what would the team look like give me the idea of what a bobby wagner um run team would look like bobby um it'd be full of winners um the culture would be amazing um hope maybe it even have this logo right here you know oh okay all right okay so is that why they let you be the first interview in this room? They're already they're already clearing the decks for own, for management. Is that what's happening? They're trying to like you know they're trying to do that, just planting the seed, and I don't even know it's being planted. Okay, so but in, in all seriousness, you know the the ownership of the Seattle Seahawks has been a question about what happens in the future. So you have mm-hmm. designs on being part of whatever the next steps are in Seattle for ownership. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, you know, obviously we haven't got that far, or even thought about that mm-hmm. or had any 
conversations or anything like that. So it's just more of a a dream at this point. Um, watching guys like Magic Johnson, um, you know, I think that's the person that uh, I really watched and learned, learned from how he did business and how he was able to, you know, leverage the way that he played the game of basketball and how smart he was off the field into um, a pretty, pretty dope empire. So I'm hoping to do the same thing. Okay. And so that that's that's your goal for sure. And, you know, uh, clearly uh, anything you put your mind to, you, you can achieve it. How much football do you think you want to play, Bobby, from here on out? What's your vision there? Uh, I want to play, you know, as long as I can. I see um, guys like Ray Lewis. I see guys like um, London Fletcher have amazing um, careers um, and play at a high level well into the later part of their careers. And so um, I think the mindset is take it a year at a time, but at the same time, it's it's understanding what the goal is and what you're trying to accomplish and, uh, you know, definitely try to bring a couple championships um, to Seattle as well. And so uh, I don't know if you're aware, it looks like it's going to be Andy Dalton uh, on the other side of the line of scrimmage for you this weekend that uh, the rookie uh, Bryce Young, it does not look like he's going to be able to, to go. Um, Bobby, what, what are your two cents on, on that? Having a more veteran hand at the, at the offense than, than a kid making his first career start in front of the 12s, which is, as you know, not, easy to do what are your two cents on that Bobby well I, I think kind of like to the point that you just made you have a guy that's a little bit more seasoned um I'm pr- pretty sure he's been in several um hostile environments or um you know has a good grasp of the offense and so he's going to know exactly where to throw the ball know how to get the the ball into the guy's hands um his playmaker's hands he's going to know how to make the plays to help his team win um, and so that is definitely something that we have to, you know, I've, I've played him a couple of times. He does a really good job of, um, you know, controlling the game and we have to make sure that doesn't happen. Have a good Sunday and beyond Bobby. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Always Thank a you. pleasure. Right back at you. Everybody check out his new comic book, fast 54. It is in support of making sure that stroke patients have the equipment that they need for rehabilitation and you should donate to the fund that is in support or in memory of his mom, vmfh.org slash Seahawks for Bobby Wagner's voiced version of the comic book, Fast 54. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 